everybody, Eileen here for readingandwritingtips.com. In this video, we're going to talk about letter writing tips and how you can write a letter that everyone will want to read. Stay tuned. You may be asking yourself, who writes letters anymore? Well, the answer is tons of people write letters. I don't know about you, but I love getting an actual letter in the mail. Emails are great, they're super, Facebook posts and all of that stuff that we use these days to keep in touch with each other are super. But there's n really nothing like getting an actual letter in the mail with your name handwritten on it by your friend or family member. In the old days, letter writing was much different than it is now. It was, it was an arduous process of getting a big thick sheet of paper out and a quill pen that you had to dip in the ink and make a mess of if you weren't an expert. But it was done all the time. We didn't have TV and radio and all this other stuff to um, distract us. And we wrote to each other all the time about everything, pages and pages and pages. And some of those letters that people used to write to each other back then are part of our history and they're in museums and they're studied for the, their language content and the things that were going on in everyday life back then. And so these letters are really quite amazing and all it was was somebody writing to their friend about how the lady that lived next door was growing a certain kind of oranges or, or whatever. And so information in those letters became part of our history. Um, emails and social media things like that that we use these days they could be part of our history but if they get deleted there's nothing to look at so um, it's very very different so if you're lucky enough to get a letter from a friend or a family member it's really important to respond in a timely manner so that they'll feel excited and, and continue to write to you so there's a couple of things to remember when you're responding to a letter that will help you write a meaningful letter to them and keep them excited. So one of the things you can do is make sure you read their letter again when you're sitting down to respond. So read through and answer any questions that they've asked you. Um, if they talked about reading a book that they really liked or maybe that they hated, um, respond as well about that book and just keep them engaged. And if you read the book, let them know what you thought. And if you didn't read the book, ask them some questions and keep them engaged. If you don't have a letter to respond to, then you're going to be starting from scratch, which may seem a little scary because you'll have a big blank piece of paper in front of you. Uh, but it's really not that scary. So here's a couple of things to remember that will help you draft a letter if you don't have something to respond to. So remember the word good, G-O-O-D. So you want to start the letter obviously with a greeting, which is the G in the word good. So when the greeting is, that's your dear Aunt Phoebe or, or whatever, whoever you're addressing your letter to. The first O on the letter good stands for old news. So you want to make sure that you address any old news. Maybe you saw them at Christmas time and they asked you how your new job was, but you had just started, so you didn't really have anything to report. So maybe old news is something that you've already talked about and you're updating them or just adding some more information. So that's one thing that you can write about. The other O is for other news. So that would be anything new. What's new in your life? Um, did your best friend get a job somewhere else and move away or you know is your husband or your sister doing something exciting at, at school at work whatever so those types of things may seem boring to you but for somebody who doesn't live near you and see you all the time those are things that they care about and things that they want to know they want to know what's happening with you and what you care about in some situations you may be feeling extreme emotion love, hate, frustration, something that you're feeling intensely and you really don't feel like you can say something out loud about that, or maybe you're pissed off at your boss and you just want to tell them about themselves but you don't want to get fired. Letter writing is a very therapeutic exercise. So this may sound silly, but you can, act you can actually write the letter and never send it. Uh, and write it and tear it up if you want. But the physical act of writing out those feelings, describing them, and saying everything you want to say on paper is hugely effective in helping to relieve the stress and those feelings of anger or frustration or whatever it is that you may be feeling and helping you internalize um, and bring those feelings out so that you're not internalizing as much as you probably were before. Um, so that's a, a great way to help you work through something. Now you can keep those letters, 
obviously if it's something horrific you don't want it want to send it to anyone um, but you can keep them you can keep them in a journal maybe for later reference or you can tear them up and burn them whatever you want to do but um, a lot of times I do I do that <clears throat> and uh, it really helps me feel better about what's going on for all you writers out there who are authors of books fiction nonfiction whatever the case may be letters are also an effective way to demonstrate how a character is feeling or thinking without being up in your face about it to the reader. So, um, for example, in the very popular book, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, the main character uses emails uh, with Christian Grey, and they email back and forth. Uh, so that it gives them the opportunity to say things that they wouldn't say to, the, to each other in person, face to face, uh, but it also lets the reader know what they're thinking and what they want to say. There have been many, many books um, where letters are used as a character tool, a characterization tool. So um, it can help you build your character and let the reader in to the character's thoughts and feelings. So it's a great way to um, demonstrate character development. So in closing, even though you maybe don't think about letter writing as much as we used to, uh, it's a great tool for many, many reasons. Keeping in touch with people that you love, um, using it in your writing stories, fiction, novels, um, even nonfiction, writing letters to each other and, and maybe put the, putting that into a book format later. Um, so all kinds of uses for letters and there are all kinds of books available to help you write business letters, personal letters, love letters, whatever it is that you want to write. So keep that in mind. There are links in the description below and if you hop over to readingandwritingtips.com and check out the article on this topic, you'll see lots of links to books and supplies that you can use in your letter writing. So until next time, happy writing.